Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our NBN Academy webinar, Keeping Norfolk Beautiful During COVID-19. Thanks for your interest and for joining us this evening. I'm Jim Herbst, Programs Manager in the City's Department of Neighborhood Development. You can't see it, but I'm proudly wearing my Keep Norfolk Beautiful shirt this evening. Before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items for you. First, tonight's session is being recorded to place on the website so that those who can't attend live can uh, watch the recording later. Second, our presenters welcome questions. And so if you look in your right panel, there should be a Q&A panel. You can submit questions there and then our presenters will do their best to answer them during or at the end of the presentations. If not, I'll look for a convenient place to interrupt and submit those questions to the presenters. Everyone but presenters are muted at the moment. At the very end, we will unmute everyone. I'll try to give you a warning, and that way any unresolved questions can be asked, uh, especially those attendees who, the one call-in attendee who can't type their questions. Third, one reason that we have not pursued webinars prior to COVID-19 is that we really value and try to encourage neighborhoods to interact and network with each other which is a little more difficult during virtual sessions. However, to try to compensate, we have opened the participant and the chat panel so that you can see who else is attending and so that you can say hi to your neighbors. We do ask in having the chat room open that you be respectful in the chat room and do your best to keep comments positive. Fourthly, there should be a polling panel on the right column. There should be a poll open right now there will be three additional polls as a part of the presentation. Feel free to answer and participate in that way. Finally is our agenda. This is unquestionably the trashiest webinar of which I have ever been a part. You are going to get a behind the scenes take on what happens with trash in Norfolk and how we can all work together to keep Norfolk's ecosystem healthy and beautiful. I recognize many of the names who are registered. Many of you in turn will recognize the presenters this evening because we've all attended many of the same community events back in the old days when we had community events. The people or the presenters are all under the Department of Public Works this evening. Fleta Jackson, Morgan DeWeese, and Sarah Sturzing are with Keep Norfolk Beautiful. Michelle Williams is with Stormwater Division. You probably already know how passionate and committed they are to Norfolk's neighborhoods. And so we're very happy to have these women a part of our NBN Academy session this evening. Their contact information will be listed at the end. In addition, at the very end, we would like to ask your assistance for each NBN Academy session. We have an NBN Academy evaluation form that I'll post in the polling panel. If you don't mind taking the time to fill that out at the very end, we'd appreciate it. With that, I will turn it over to Flita and thank you all very much for doing this for us. Flita. All right, thanks for inviting and keep Norfolk beautiful here tonight. I'm going to ask for the first slide to come up, please. My name is Flita Jackson. Jim did a great job introducing everyone. And I am the project coordinator with Keep Norfolk Beautiful. With me tonight is Sarah Sturzing, our new education manager, Morgan DeWeese, our Keep Norfolk Beautiful office manager and volunteer coordinator, and Michelle Williams with Norfolk's environmental stormwater team. Plus tonight, we've had the support and contributions of Norfolk's waste management team. So now it's time to get comfy and start talking trash, one of my favorite subjects. Again, here is our agenda tonight. We will be looking at trash, where it goes, and our roles. Hopefully you will learn a bit more about who Keep Norfolk Beautiful is and how we are all part of Norfolk's trash story. Next slide. All right, that brings us to our first polling question. So I don't see anybody's answered them yet. So if you would take a second, I'd really like to get to know you a little better and see uh, what brought you here today. We've got people wanting to know a little bit more, some friends, and they saw the advertisement on the website. I might have had to pick watching too much Netflix because I happen to be very guilty of that right now. 
Next slide, please. The mission of Keep Norfolk Beautiful is to lead our community to reduce litter, recycle right, and beautify Norfolk. Keep Norfolk Beautiful is part of Public Works and is a Bureau under waste management. We are located in the Lafayette Park and our office is in the Ernie Morgan Environmental Action Center. Around our building is our Eco Gardens, which are a wonderful place to visit and sit for a while. Additionally, Keep Norfolk Beautiful is an affiliate of Keep America Beautiful. This affiliation allows us opportunities for collaborations, shared advertising, and resources. There are three focus areas for Keep Norfolk Beautiful, litter prevention, recycling, and beautification. We do this through outreach and education, our volunteers hosting community cleanups, and our Adopt-a-Spot program, and beautification projects. These happen weekly, monthly, and seasonally. Next slide. To start, we first need to understand trash. Trash is simply waste out of place. It can be as simple as a candy wrapper or as elaborate as illegal dumping sites. Trash will decrease property values by 7%. Trash clogs their storm drains and increases our risk for nuisance flooding. Trash affects our economy and negatively affects humans, plants, and animals. Next slide. All right, this brings us to our next slide and it's about litter. I'm gonna give you just a few seconds to see if I can get some answers. We'd like to know what you're seeing around the city. I know we're still um, being careful and cautious with COVID-19 out there but on your walks or on your drives around the city, if you can let me know what you're seeing out there, it'll help us immensely. I see we have a lot of people who have seen more trash on the ground. And unfortunately, I think we'd all have to agree with this right now. Next slide. We'll start with the trash on the ground, as a matter of fact, and what happens when it gets left. This is our stormwater connection to trash and why it can be problematic. For this section, Michelle Williams, our stormwater public relations specialist, will take over as she is our expert in all things stormwater. Hey, well, thank you, Flita. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, in our stormwater division, we do deal a lot with things that end up on the ground, especially trash, because our focus is stormwater runoff. Um, runoff happens with any storm, um, and when it rains, you can see here in our little graphic that the rain runs off the top of your roof, it runs down your lawn, down your sidewalk, down your driveway, and anything that goes with it ends up running into the gutter, down the street, right into the closest storm drain. Now, the stormwater system is separate from the sewer system, so anything that gets washed off the ground and into that storm drain will run down through the stormwater pipes and then eventually gets dumped into the closest creek, stream, river, or ocean. Um, and that's kind of, and, and it gets dumped into our oceans and our streams and our rivers completely untreated. And that's the key word here is untreated. Um, stormwater is never cleaned like the water from our sewer system. So anything in that storm drain and through the pipes does contribute to our water quality problems. I'm sure you're all familiar with what our storm drains look like. There's one right there on the slide. Um, so why do we even care if trash gets in the storm drains? Well, in the second picture there, you can see one of our storm drains with the lid off and it is completely packed with trash that's run off the road into the storm drain. Um, the main thing with this is when those storm drains get clogged, um, it causes flooding. They get backed up and it'll cause flooding in your neighborhood, um, on your streets, and nobody likes to deal with that. Um, when they do get clogged, what we have to do is send out our vector truck. And that top right picture, you can see our vector crew 
um, in a clogged storm drain trying to clear it. Now these vector trucks are like great big vacuums and they put a big pipe into the drain and suck all the debris and all the trash out of there to get it moving again. Um, we have three vector trucks in the city of Norfolk, and those tr three trucks basically spend all day going around just keeping our storm drains clean. Um, and they're responsible for about 27,000 storm drains that we have in the city. Um, so those three trucks, you, as you can guess, uh, stay really, really busy. Um, when the drains are clear and working like they're supposed to, all the trash and debris that's washing through the pipes um, is bad, again, because it's a big source. Uh, our waterways are a big source of recreation for us and also home to many species of plants and animals. Um, think about if you're swimming in a river or ocean water that's been contaminated with litter and anything else that's run off the road or the street or our houses, and that could be grease, it could be oil, it could be fertilizer and pesticides that have run off your lawn, um, and even dog poop that hasn't been properly picked up by, uh, you know, our back out in our backyards by our neighbors, or maybe us sometimes, you know, before a rainstorm. So um, we also rely on animals in the ocean as a food source. So we have fish and crabs and oysters that have been living. Think about this, they're living in that polluted water. They're swimming in it. They're eating trash. I don't know about you, but I'm not really thrilled with the thought of eating a fish that's been swimming in and eating trash and pesticides and, and, and feces. So we wanna keep those clean. Um, currently, with our sheltering in place, Norfolk has seen a big influx of litter on the ground and in our storm drains, especially of the personal protection um, equipment litter, which are things like masks and wipes and plastic gloves. Um, so not only is that a lot more plastic in our waterways, but there's also the possibility that it could be infected with the COVID virus, which is something nobody wants right now. So please, let's all do our part and keep all of the trash where it belongs, and that's in our green bins. Okay, so we're going to go back to Fleeta, and she is going to take you through exactly what happens to that trash once it gets in your green bin. Fleeta? Thank you, Michelle. All right. I think we're ready to move to the next slide. Every home in Norfolk has a way to discard trash. For our homes, it's a green bin. For apartments, it might be a bin or a dumpster. But what happens to this trash once it leaves the curb? Next slide. This is waste management by the numbers. You and I have one green bin, but waste management services 61,700 bins per week. It is estimated that one person will generate 30.8 pounds of trash per week. What does this look like for your home, your block? It all adds up. So waste management will dispose of approximately 1,650 tons of trash a week. And this does not include the bulk, bulk waste pickups and the cleanups that keep Norfolk Beautiful coordinates. For example, during a typical Clean the Bay Day event, waste management will pick up trash from over 40 sites, totaling more than 16,500 pounds. Keep in mind, though this trash is out of our site, it does not disappear. Norfolk's trash first goes to the Norfolk Transfer Station and then to a cogeneration plant. A little bit more on this step later. But what if the trash goes straight into a landfill? What does that look like? For example, in a landfill, it will take plastic waste up to a thousand years to break down, and plastic never really goes away. It just gets smaller. It is estimated that by the year 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the world's oceans. That aluminum can, it's going to take a minimum of 80 to 100 years. And those red solo cups that we see, they will take at least 50 years. And styrofoam, it never goes away. So let's look at how a modern landfill works. But first, another poll. This one is on how long items might last in a landfill. 
Give us your best guess and I'll reveal the answers after the landfill demonstration by Morgan DeWeese. Next slide, please. Next, yeah. No, Morgan. Michelle just has to stop sharing her screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, so again, my name is Morgan and I work at Chief Morphic Beautiful. And this is an Enviroscape. Uh, this particular model uh, shows the difference between a modern landfill and an old style landfill. Um, a couple of key features to point out before I go into the demonstration is this is, of course, our modern landfill. It has four distinct layers. Over here, we have our leachate collection tank. We have our old style dump. We have a private well located near the old style dump, and that's uh, represented with the spray nozzle. And then we have a monitoring well over here by our modern landfill uh, because the landfills, uh, well, modern landfills actually take into account how close they are to groundwater or an aquifer, and they monitor their water on a regular basis to make sure there aren't any issues. Okay, so let's talk about these four layers of our modern landfill. The first two are just layers of trash, which I have represented by pieces of sponge. And then I've got some drink mix uh, sprinkled on top of this to represent leachate. And leachate will collect in this main collection tray this is the third layer. And then our fourth layer is a backup leachate collection tray. Now, these leachate collection systems are not just for this uh, demonstration. They are a part of modern landfill as well. So let's talk about leachate for a second. Um, so basically, in a landfill, you've got trash, you've got chemicals, dirt, grease, grime, oil, um, but also bacteria and organisms. So as uh, water is moving through the trash, it's pulling all of those chemicals, bacteria, organisms, dirt, and all of that through it. And it creates this uh, liquid byproduct called leachate. So I'm gonna use my watering can to kind of make it rain over this landfill. And my watering can actually kind of helps speed up the process too, because I can get a lot of water out. Um, you might not be able to see it as well on the screen, but I have some purple water collecting in this leachate collection tray over here. What you won't see is it's not going to go into that bottom collection tray because my main collection tray is working just fine and I've got a stopper in the hole, but say there was like some massive rain event, we've got a backup collection tray just in case. So going back to that water monitoring, Let's make sure that our water from our modern landfill, the groundwater around it, is still clean. Of course, I've got to turn on my spray nozzle. There we go. All right. So, as you can kind of see that, my water is nice and clear, which means my leachate collection system has been working for my modern landfill. All right. So, moving. Oh, wait, before I move on to the old style landfill, let's talk about leachate a little bit more. Um, part of the leachate collection system is pumps to bring that leachate out. So I've got a little syringe here that is representing my pumps and it might go into the above ground leachate storage tank. Or because that leachate already has those bacteria and organisms needed to help break down the landfill materials, they might actually put it back in the landfill to help speed up that process and turn this landfill into a huge bioreactor. Um, so that's a couple of methods they might use to capture that byproduct. All right, so our old style landfill is over here and it is basically just a dirt pit. Um, interestingly enough, back in Roman times, they had codes and regulations for municipal waste. Of course, their landfill was essentially just a dirt pit. Little did they know that without any sort of barrier mechanism something underneath it that all that dirt grease grime organisms and bacteria would soak into the soil and eventually get into groundwater all right so we'll make it rain on my old style landfill and not to worry i've got little collection things under here um so like i said over here is a private well and let's say that's my house that's my private well i live out far enough that 
I don't get uh, municipal water. So what happens as more and more leachate gets into groundwater, it eventually spreads. It moves away from this area, it gets into our groundwater and spreads. So let's check our private well and see how our water is doing over here. All right. So hopefully you can see that okay, the water is pink, which means that the leachate from this old style landfill, at some point it infiltrated my private well and that's my drinking water, that's what I'm showering with. Um, so that's definitely not ideal. Okay, so what about when the landfill closes? Well, once again, thanks to modern landfills, uh, modern landfill design, um, they've taken into consideration uh, human health and our environment's health. And they would actually use impermeable layers. Of course, they would fit a lot better than this does, but an impermeable layer on top of the landfill so that the water's gonna run off. And then they'll put dirt and grasses over it to make it a usable green space, uh, much like Mount Trashmore. Um, as far as the old style of landfill, well, they just used, way back when, we just used dirt and grass. And of course, when it rains over our modern landfill, it's going to run right off into the stormwater drains over there, and it's going to be just rainwater because it's not getting into all the trash. But over our old style landfill, that rain is going to eventually seep down. It's going to seep into the trash, and it's going to create more leachate. So important thing to remember is that just because a landfill is capped doesn't mean that it's closed. Leachate collection continues for many, many years afterwards. All right, so one more thing I've got to talk about with our modern landfill design is that there are gases produced by the breakdown process, breakdown decomposition process, all those organisms, bacteria, they're working hard, they're producing gas. So again, referencing Mount Trashmore, uh, you guys might be familiar with the flagpole that is over there. So that is actually a ventilation system. Landfill gases are about 50% carbon dioxide and 50% methane, and methane is super flammable. So without any type of ventilation, you'd have landfill fires and landfill explosions, um, especially once they're capped. So they have to keep venting those gases out. And one method is the simple and creative method that they use at Mount Trashmore, just a hollow flagpole to let those gases escape. Um, another method is to actually capture the methane that's being released. They can use it for their own operations or sell it um, for a profit. Um, one final method for methane or for dealing with the methane is a methane flare. And basically it'd be a pipe coming out of the landfill, probably somewhere where no one's gonna get to it really easily, but basically it's venting that methane, they light a spark and it burns that methane as it comes out. So although landfills are often met with disgust, uh, they are really, we have to thank them. They're doing a great job protecting our, you know, public health, human health, but also our environment's health, protecting our groundwater and drinking water. Um, but of course, landfills are way more intricate than what I could accurately depict here with this simple demonstration. But I hope this kind of helps introduce some of the more in-depth inner workings of a landfill. Um, but of course, that's not the only path our trash can take. Uh, so Frida, I'll give it back to you because I'm very curious what the answer to that poll is. <laughs> Thanks, Morgan. All right. Um, okay, I see some answers coming into the poll while we get the slides up and running again. Um, I see a lot of you are think, I didn't have very many answers, but uh, we have a couple with leather shoe and one with lumber and somebody said the train ticket and the milk carton. Let me give you the answers then. You're pretty smart if you're thinking that it wasn't the train ticket. That'll take about two weeks to break down in a landfill. The next one is the milk carton, and that's five years. The lumber is the next at 10 to 15 years. And for all of you that guess the leather shoe, you're right. That takes the longest to break down in a landfill, and that'll take 25 to 40 years. So we'll close out this poll and um, go to our next slide and launch the next poll. Oh, we already have the next slide. Sorry about that. All right, so in Norfolk, we're taking one additional step to decrease our waste. 
and that's trash to energy. Once our waste leaves the Norfolk Transfer Station, it, ta it is taken to a cogeneration plant where it's burned for energy. So what does that exactly mean for Norfolk? Norfolk is diverting 100% of our trash from the regional landfill. 75% is converted to energy and the remaining 25%, which is the ash, is sent to the landfill as daily cover. This helps our landfill not fill up as quickly and is a way to reuse, repurpose our trash. It is a form of recycling. Landfills require a daily cover. And once the trash has been dumped, it is, um, once the trash has been um, dumped, it is covered with a layer of compressed earth or soil and that's laid on top of it to keep the interaction between the air and the waste um, down. It reduces odors and it enables a firm base upon which vehicles can operate. Next slide. Reuse, reuse, recycle. All residents living in a home or apartment of four units or less can recycle curbside but we also have the option to first reduce and reuse. Before we get into the three R's, let's see where we stand on the recycling question. So it's time for that poll to see some results and to see what kind of recyclers we have here today. Give us your best answer. It's all anonymous, so we don't know. Any results yet, Jim? All right, well, let's ponder that as we kind of move ahead and, oh, here they come. All right, we have a lot of good recyclers that are using their blue bin every day. And we have a few that it's not an option and a few that it's hit or miss. Let me try to um, clarify some of the myths in recycling and give you some options for those of you who do not have the option to recycle at curbside. Next slide, please. For many years, we started the recycling story by focusing on using the blue bins. It was a new behavior that we all had to learn, but we really should have started with reuse and reuse. Our recycling conversation starts with waste reduction. It is important to be a savvy consumer and to think before we buy. How can we reduce our waste? The list on this slide is merely a starting point. Remember those leather shoes in the landfill pole? What if we had donated them versus throwing them away? What could they have become? Once we remember steps one and two, it's important to know what we can recycle and why. Next slide, please. What goes in your blue bin? The categories pictured may be recycled in your blue bin. You might ask, why has, have our recycling items shifted? Recycling is a business, and with all businesses, markets change. At this time, these items are marketable and are supported by a viable economy. If you ever need more information, you can find a complete list of what to recycle on the city's website at norfolk.gov slash recycling. And for a better understanding, let's take a closer look at these categories. The pictures above illustrate, the pictures in the slide illustrate what we can throw in our recycling bins. If you don't see it here, it doesn't belong. And we have these listed on the website with pictures and it's an easy match. It's a match game. If it matches, it belongs. If it doesn't, throw it out. Now let's take a look at the TFC recovery facility in Chesapeake. This is where recycling is taken.
All right, while Michelle's getting the slides reset, um, it was pretty interesting to see what happens in the TFC recycling plant um, and how they actually hand sort the materials and what it looks like when it's dumped on the floor and what they go through on a daily basis. So we need to look at contamination. Contamination in our blue bins is a real problem. This has prompted many countries such as China to limit contamination, contaminated materials in all shipments to 0.5% versus a 25 to 35% the US was exporting. Contaminated recyclables end up in a landfill. This means we're paying twice for disposal, once for TFC to pick it up and sort, and then for TFC to send it to the landfill or the cogeneration plant. It's estimated that one in four bins are contaminated. How many bins is that in your neighborhood or even on your street? It's critical for us to stop contamination so that the items in your blue bin can be reused and repurposed. It's better to throw it out than contaminate your bin. And the pictures in this slide show that we want to avoid food waste, keep it clean, dry, and empty, so no pizza boxes, and, a, and an item called tanglers, and those are the cords, hoses, and Christmas tree lights. And of course, no plastic bags. Never put a plastic bag in your recycling bin. You'll notice the photo on the right is a recycling facility that's had to stop sorting because there were so many plastic bags tangled in their conveyor belts. And it takes someone to personally go in and climb up these huge belts to clean out the tangled mess. Again, we want it dry and clean, and when in doubt, throw it out. Next slide, please. That one, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. It's the making a difference slide. Thank you. So now this brings us to the part that I get to tell you what Keep Norfolk Beautiful and Waste Management are doing to help keep Norfolk clean and green. Next slide, please. Keep Norfolk Beautiful programs on this slide help prevent litter in Norfolk. Currently, our spring and summer events were interrupted by the COVID-19 virus. We are in the process of reworking our safety protocols, trainings, and outreach to be mindful of safe social distancing and to follow all CDC guidelines. This does not mean we will stop our core programs. Instead, we will relaunch them with a sharper focus to our mission and to the litter needs of Norfolk. And you can see from the slide that we have litter events that go throughout the year. Um, especially our adopt a spot program, which is one of the oldest programs that Keep Norfolk Beautiful has. Uh, it, it started in the early 1990s, and we currently have approximately 180 active adopt a spots cleaning up throughout the city on a quarterly basis. Next slide, please. Beautification has always been a key component for Keep Norfolk Beautiful. In the first six months of our fiscal year 2020, Keep Norfolk Beautiful, our community partners and volunteers planted 283 trees and 1,871 bulbs and grasses. We gave away over 500 trees and painted trash cans for Poplar Hall Park and Monticello Village Park. All of this to create spaces that encourage greener communities. Keep Norfolk Beautiful and Waste Management are making a difference by helping residents reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce by promoting reusable over single use items. Get rid of your plastic water bottle and take a reusable bottle. Ditch the straw or get a reusable straw. Take your tote bags to the grocery store so that you can say no to those plastic bags. 
there are a lot of ways that you can reduce the waste that goes in your green bin. Reuse, we do this through workshops and DIY projects that Keep Norfolk Beautiful is active in posting and sending out through our newsletter. And recycling, we offer several ways residents can safely discard items for repurposing. For the few respondents in the recycling poll that don't have an option of recycling, we have two drop-off centers on Pine Ridge Road and Lance Road. One is at Pine Ridge, which is the waste management facility, and Lance Road is a towing facility in Norfolk. Both of those have dumpsters and containers that you can place your recyclables into, and um, they're there for your use. The other thing that I wanna draw your attention to is that Norfolk residents have the option for properly disposing of household hazardous waste and electronics. These items cannot be disposed of or recycled in the conventional sense. Household hazardous waste must be taken to the Norfolk Transfer Station on Woodland Avenue, and they're opened on Tuesdays and Saturdays from noon until 4 p.m. The electronic waste can be dropped off at the Norfolk Towing Facility on Lance Road, and they're taking these items on Tuesdays through Thursdays from 8 a.m. till noon. Let's take a look at what we can dispose of through household hazardous waste and our electronics waste program. This slide shows you what is acceptable for household hazardous waste and electronic waste. I realize it's a little hard to read. There are a lot of items. And for the complete list, please visit norfolk.gov trash. But both, you need to remember that both electronics and household hazardous waste never can be disposed of in your bins. They must be disposed of properly through, one, through our programs. So never put any of the items on this list in your green or your blue bin. Next slide, please. Keep Norfolk Be Beautiful visits classrooms. We, we go to summer camps and civic leagues every year to offer programs and information on litter reduction, recycling, and beautification. We also host workshops and offer DIY projects. Tonight is a good example of a Keep Norfolk Beautiful outreach. The more we know and understand, the more we can accomplish together. Next slide. What can we all do to help keep Norfolk beautiful and clean and green? Show you care, get involved, and volunteer. These are some simple things you can do to protect our environment and get involved. Reduce, rethink, and respect. Around Earth Day this year, the news was reporting less smog in LA, animals returning to Yellowstone, and the Venice canals being cleaned for the first time. What that told me was that Earth is resilient, and by us sheltering in place, it started to regrow. Being thoughtful in our actions and choices will make a difference. Try one of these ideas or come up with your own. It's really the first small steps that make the biggest difference. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Sarah Sturging. She will fill you in on the next steps and show you how and show you the power of teamwork. able to um, Keep Norfolk Beautiful has used over 7,000 volunteer hours, 6,500, I'm sorry, 65,000 volunteer hours, 7,000 volunteers, 191 public spaces have been cleaned and improved, nearly 140,000 pounds of litter collected with 1,700 youth being reached through environmental education in our Green Readers Program and outreach, with 478 trees planted. And you can see the total cost savings for our city 
which uh, right now is in need of funding. So it's nice to have all these people's hours at 1,761,000 hours plus. So we, we harness the, the teams of people from the military, from uh, academia, from just the citizenry around the city to bring our, our ability to beautify and live in a beautiful place. Um, we're grateful to all of the citizens. And we also want to give a shout out to all the people that work in waste management who are sort of doing a Herculean task right now of keeping the city as clean as possible during this time when many of our services are, are being delayed. But the good news is you can volunteer with us because we're going to start our volunteer programs back up this week with adopt a spots and you can uh, find us at keep norfolk beautiful on facebook and also at knb at norfolk.gov thanks so much flita thanks sarah um, it is pretty amazing what we can accomplish together so um uh, we do have a question and answer slide when uh, Michelle can get that put back up. But now it's your turn to ask us questions. So let us know what you want, in, want us to answer. Uh, you can do it in person, uh, virtually that is, or you can write your question in the uh, question and answer box. So I don't know if there are any questions, but if they are, we're here live and ready to answer it. And if we don't have the answer, we will make sure we get it for you. Hi, Felita. Yes. We don't have any questions in the question and answer box. Um, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and unmute everybody in a second. I know we have one call in participant uh, who can't type questions. So in a second, I'm going to unmute everybody. I want to give everybody fair warning. Uh, I didn't do that last week and they didn't mute themselves. And so we got to hear somebody's private conversation. Uh, so if you don't want in the conversation, uh, please mute yourself when I unmute you. Um, since we don't have any questions in the question and answer box, I'll go ahead and unmute everybody. I have or am now right now opening the evaluation so that should be posted before you leave. If you don't mind filling out the NBN Academy evaluation, we'd appreciate it. Uh, that should be in the polling box. So I'm going to unmute everybody now again, in case you don't, in case you have any questions that uh, you haven't been able to type in. As soon as I find that box. Thanks, Jim. And we do want to hear from everybody. It's important to get feedback. So, one on mute, um, so we can hear some background noise. Are there any questions out there? Yes. What is the? I know. I think my. Uh, no, 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 I'll. I'll type mine. What is the difference between adopt the spot cleanup and a neighborhood cleanup? All right, our adopt a spot. Yeah, it's a great question. They're all really, really similar. So adopt a spot means that you will come in and get trained with your team, and you'll get a team together, and we will assign you one mile stretch in the city of Norfolk somewhere, and you will clean that stretch up once per quarter for two years. It's a two-year commitment. We'll provide all the supplies you need and all of the materials. There are reporting forms that we need to have back. Is there a lot of that? Okay, maybe not. It's, in, it's on my end then. So we will give you all the supplies and we will give you all the materials that you need. There are reports that are due back to us at the end of your cleanup. We do track how much trash is picked up, where it's picked up, and when it's picked up. We need these reports for Keep America Beautiful as part of our affiliation, and we also need it to send to the Department of Environmental Quality. So adopt a spot, you have a two-year commitment, cleaning up quarterly, it's eight times a year. It's a mile stretch in a park or some city street in Norfolk right of way only. 
a community cleanup or a neighborhood cleanup are, are virtually the same. You get a group of people who are interested in cleaning up an area and we give you the supplies again. We give you the materials. It does require a reporting form and uh, you go out and clean up once you're trained. Training is important for all of our cleanups. We will train the leaders prior to any cleanup happening and that training will soon be virtually so it'll be easier to uh, attend and can be attended on your own schedule. Thanks to the COVID-19 virus, that's one of the changes and improvements I think that we're making. So you do the cleanup, you report back, and then you, um, so it's a one-off time, that's all. If you wanna do it again later or a different spot, you can do it again later in a different spot. But that's the biggest difference between an adopt-a-spot, it's a two-year commitment, eight times, and as to, opposed to a community cleanup or a neighborhood cleanup, that's just a one-event kind of thing. Peta, can you touch on uh, pet waste stations and the ability for folks to be able to uh, come in if they just want to do a one-off and get a cleanup kit with us? Oh, yes, I'm happy to do that. Uh, we do have some pet waste stations that have been adopted throughout the city, uh, one of which is in um, Lafayette Park near the Orney Morgan Center. Uh, and uh, we do supply bags to the volunteers who have um, who have volunteered to pick them up and keep the stations restocked. And due to the COVID-19 virus, we have suspended all that up until this point, but we're now working on getting the bags to the volunteers. So if there are any Petway station volunteers on this call, please give us a call and we will schedule a way to get you the bags um, without any contact. And our number is 441-1347. I believe it's in the next slide. Um, and so that's what we're doing. And in addition to that, we are going to start handing out cleanup kits that you can uh, pick up if you wanna do those one-off community cleanups or neighborhood cleanups and even our adopt a spots, they can pick up extra supplies that we might have. And again, we're gonna make this touchless as easy as possible. We will not need the supplies back at this point. So again, if you get more trash bags or gloves than you need, then you're welcome to keep them for your next cleanup. We will have safety guidelines with all of our um, programs that will we will need you all to follow. And again, we will need the reports back and your volunteer sign-in sheet. And all of that should be coming uh, in July with programming on a much smaller scale. So keeping in mind social distancing, small groups, maybe just uh, your family to begin with uh, as a, a way to walk around your neighborhood or if there's a park close to your neighborhood that you like to, to walk your dog in, uh, we are interested in getting you the supplies you need to start helping us decrease this litter we're all seeing in the city of Norfolk now. Lita, if I can jump in real quick, Stormwater also has some pet waste stations to be adopted. Um, that's through a grant with the HRPDC um, which is in conjunction with Ask HR Green. So if anybody's interested in adopting a pet waste station through their civic league or maybe their apartments or something like that, they can always go to Ask HR Green. Um, if you just search pet waste station, it'll come up. Now the difference in these pet waste stations and K and B's is that you are actually adopting the station. Once you're approved through the grant, um, you will get the station you're responsible for setting it up. You're responsible for keeping the bags full and for keeping the trash dumped. So we can't provide any of that, but we do have six or eight um, pet waste stations to give away to civic leagues and neighborhoods and apartment buildings this year for free. Fantastic, Michelle. I, I totally slipped my mind. 
And I'd like to jump in too, if I may. If I'm being heard, am I being heard? Yes. <laughs> KNB is available to do a Zoom meeting with your civic league and leadership. If you have Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts or faith groups right now that are needing speakers to come in and talk about some of these opportunities in Norfolk, I'm sure I can speak for Michelle with Swan as well. Um, we are all in together and Fourth of July is coming up. We know that fireworks um, not only is a noise person, but people tend to forget to pick up after themselves um, on their picnics and their fireworks. So if you find that you have a hot spot, please give us a call. We can, we can pre package and clean up for you. One of the things that might be helpful if you don't have a question, it might be helpful to give yourself. Thanks, Sarah. Are there any other questions out there? Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, this is Karen Barnes. I was wondering if we could get signs to put out in the neighborhoods to um, uh, to let people know about Norfolk Care and to discourage litter and dumping. I'm not sure I heard all that, Jim, and I thought it was with Norfolk Care, so I don't know if that's something you can address. I think Sharon was asking if she can get signs out about ways to let people know about Norfolk Cares and the numbers to call. If I'm wrong, Sharon, please try Correct. It again. Correct. I can pass that suggestion along to Norfolk Cares. Um, they're always <laughs> The funny thing is they gave me a big package right before the COVID hit. Uh, Halima gave all of us a big package of promo items to go take to Civic Leagues uh, to encourage people to call the care center. And then we didn't make it around to any of those Civic Leagues. But yes, we will look for new ways to get the word out. Are there any additional questions? And I saw, uh, I don't know if anybody else gets the HR Green emails, but they are always good emails. I think Morgan posted that on the chat window uh, to ask hrgreen.org. That's a great organization that you're a part of, right? Yes, we are part of Ask HR Green as well as um, Michelle and the Stormwater uh, offices. So Ask HR Green has four educational uh, branches. One is um, water quality. One would be fats, oils, and greases, which again with utilities. And then stormwater has uh, an educational group. And our group is a recycling and beautification group. And this is where we get together with all 17 localities once a month. We do some regional campaigns together. I don't know if any of you have seen in the past our team up to clean up campaign. I know we're going to be working on some recycling campaigns coming up um, in our fiscal year 21. But we like to get together and try to pull our resources, our brain power and our ideas and not reinvent the wheel. So we have the wonderful website of askhrgreen.org. They have a newsletter which I believe comes out once a quarter that is full of some great ideas as well as a blog. It's a great resource tool for everything you need to know. And additionally, they have Norfolk specific information on this website. So if you want to know about what's recyclable in Norfolk and where to find things, and it's easier to remember askhrgreen.org than norfolk.gov slash trash. Um, you can navigate to what to do with your waste in Norfolk, whether it's recycling or curbside, it gives you that information. So it's a wonderful resource and a great team of people. And it's amazing the power of getting together with the 17 local municipalities all the way up to Williamsburg and Suffolk and Virginia Beach and Chesapeake. So it's pretty amazing um, when we all get together, large and small. We all have things to contribute and we have better ideas for it. Uh, 
Thanks, Cleta. Are there any more questions? All right, well, we thank you all. Thanks, Cleta, Michelle, Morgan, Sarah. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate your time. And as you said, uh, you would be available to do these to civic leagues, right? Or if they have virtual meetings, so that would be great. Um, exactly, yes. We'd love to be part of any of your meetings to continue this conversation and to get feedback on a smaller scale. That sounds amazing. Okay, and if people know of hot spots around the city, that, that is also good to alert us about places that we could focus on. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Um, Wanda Turner and um, I sent a question there out. I don't know if you can see it. It was about the pet stations where my neighborhood, um, Middletown Arch. Uh, did you put it in the chat? Yes, ma'am. Are you looking for one? Are you looking for yes, one? In yes. Center? Yes. Well, why don't you shoot us an email at knb at norfolk.gov, which is on the slide, and we can direct you to the grant that is available. Okay, great. We have a lot of um, dog walkers, a lot of people walk the dogs around this here, around this area. Um, you said something about the hot spot. Yes. Uh, someone mentioned the hot spot. I did, yep. Oh, okay. Um, I was riding down Virginia Beach Boulevard and I'm passing Young Terrace. That's a, a project, a housing project. I see trucks in the grass. I see furniture sitting, oh, I mean, furniture, disregard furniture, uh, a lot of debris all down the road. I don't understand what's going on, but I never looked like that. Just riding down there, it was, I couldn't believe it. Somebody, I think somebody got put out of their house or something and you got piles of furniture and trash and stuff sitting in that door. I didn't want to go in too. I didn't want to just, you know, and this is what I can see going down Virginia Beach Boulevard. It, it, it kind of concerned me because I, I, I don't understand what's going on, why? Why is it like that? Um, I don't know. It's just my concern. I believe it looked like something back in the 60s or something. I don't know. Anyway, that was my concern. I wanted to mention that. It, Thank you. I, I don't know how you, we, we work with public housing. And, and one of the things that we try to do with um, Jim's group as well and some of the other initiatives throughout the city is to partner on ways to help people um, identify how we can help them focus on cleanups in those places. So thanks for giving us a heads up on that. Okay, you're welcome. Well, thank you everyone. We are at seven o'clock. We want to thank you for all your participation. Uh, and we are asking you as neighborhood leaders to help spread the word, uh, social media, otherwise use your influence to encourage people to take good care of our city. Uh, for more information on Keep Norfolk Beautiful, you can look at their website. Our website in neighborhood development is norfolk.gov forward slash neighborhoods. And also we have some, or we're working on some upcoming webinars with the PTA, uh, also with keeping communities connected. And we are working with, in our department to also have a webinar on uh, new legislation regarding affordable housing, both with the state and at the federal level. Uh, we don't have dates for those yet, but those are webinars that we are working on. Uh, if you haven't taken the poll already, we appreciate your evaluation. Uh, and with that, we'll say good night uh, thank you so much, everybody, for your participation. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, you all. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks.